guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla. First and foremost in this video, I want to apologize if you hear the ducks and chickens in the background. I turn on my camera and everything out on my property is going crazy right now. So we're just gonna pretend that you don't hear farm animals in the back, okay? <laughs> so in this video today, I'm going to talk to you about some must-haves in my embroidery room. Now these are things that I find make my work easier. These are just my personal opinion of things that help me with my workflow things that I find useful. Um, th some of them could technically not be must-haves, but they certainly make my workday easier. So I wanted to share with you all of them. So I have 10 items that we're gonna talk about today, and I hope that you guys find them helpful too. Okay, so some of these I have affiliate links for, some of these I do not. Some of them, they're just the basic website link of where I got them. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is heat tape. Now I originally bought this for when I was solely doing like sublimation type stuff, but I have found a big use for this just in general. And usually what I do with it is when I am doing a custom item, I always have a printout of that embroidery design and I will place it on the garment before I hoop it um, or before I press it, whatever. So I will use this to keep it in place. I was using sewing pins for a while and um, I've kind of gotten away from doing that just because I, why, why poke excess holes in a garment if you don't need to? Even if it's a knit fabric where those fibers are going to lock back together, why put extra holes if you don't need to? So I've been using heat tape. Um, I use it to put my design on hats when I'm getting ready to press hats or when I line something up in a mighty hoop and then I go ahead and, and when I'm getting ready to put it on like the mighty hoop stand, it keeps my design where I want it so that I can see exactly where center is so that I can line it up and hoop it correctly. So I've been using heat tape to place my designs for hooping. The next is this mighty hoop T-square. Now you don't have to buy the mighty hoop brand. This is just the one that I have. Um, I line this up on the collar to get my left chest logo placement or uh, you know to have the same placement on my garments so like if I'm doing the back of a shirt um, so that I have the same exact measurement from the collar. I find this very very helpful. Now I have cheap plastic ones that I've gotten off of Amazon. Um, I, I just simply like this one better. I feel like I can line things up better. Um, I feel like this is much easier when you have a collar that's kind of wonky and not sewn correctly because these ones, I find it much easier than ones like this. Um, I, don't, I, I don't really have a good explanation as to why. Um, I just simply like this one better. So I just, I have found this to be a really big must have in my Okay, the next item is basting adhesive. Now, I was using this mostly when I was making baby blankets, um, but I have found it to be used a lot in my craft room as of late. And a lot of times that I will do when I'm doing embroidery on a polo or the back of a jacket. So what I'll do is I'll turn the garment inside out, flatten it out, I'll spray it, put down my stabilizer, and then turn it right side out and then hoop it and that really helps with the things that like you want to do double stabilizer on um, if you don't have the mighty hoop stand it's really really helpful to do it that way because then you're not having to maneuver and manipulate your stabilizer every time like if you if it's not straight and you have to re-hoop it it keeps the stabilizer in place so that you're not like oh the corners folded in and it's not you know square on the on the hoop this really really helps keep your stabilizer in place and I have even used it because I bought the wrong size square um, stabilizers. So I'll, so like on my Mighty Hoop stand, I'll spray two pieces, like the, I'll spray the small square onto a bigger piece so that I have my, my double layer that I want without having to waste it and have it just sit there because I bought the wrong size. <laughs> so. So basing adhesive, you never know what you're gonna need to stick together. It doesn't gum up your needles on your machine. Um, I usually just buy this at Walmart, um, but you can get it online. There's 505, there's all different kinds, but I usually just get it at Walmart when I grocery shop. Um, so yeah, basing adhesive, definitely gonna use it a lot more than you think. The next is these fine tip tweezers. Now I use these for several different things. I will use them to pick out 
you know, water soluble stabilizer in between small letters. Sometimes you don't want to get a garment, you know, completely wet just to get a few pieces. So I'll use these to dig out like just real small pieces if there's just a few of them. Um, I will also use them to pick out threads that need to be cut. Sometimes, you know, th your jump stitches don't get cut and they kind of get looped underneath each other and you need something real fine to pick them out. I'll use these to weed vinyl too. I use fine tip tweezers for a lot of different things. I love them. I love them much better than like the flat edge ones. I feel like I can just get um, a better grip on things and a more precise grip on things. So fine tip tweezers, definitely a must. Now the next is these tweezers that I actually got with my very first Cricut back in like 2016. I've had these forever. These I cannot function without. I'm not even kidding you. I cannot operate my machine without these because this helps me thread my machine and I'll show you a little demo of what I mean. Okay, we're gonna look at needle number one right here and I hope you guys can see that. I hope it stays in focus. So I took the thread out and I never use that manual threader. I don't know why, I just don't like it. So I usually just do it myself. So I will poke it through the eye of the needle. And what I do is I put it in quite a ways. What I do is I will take the tip and kind of press it down use these to grab the thread and pull it through. So I use this absolutely all the time. Um, sometimes, you know, you can stick it all the way up and then pull it through, but this is what I do to help bring it through the, um, this part right here. I'm blanking on what it's called. So I use these, I'm not even kidding you, every single day, multiple times a day, this is how these come in handy. The next is this electronic air duster. Now I was always buying the cans of canned air, but I wanted something that I can just recharge. Um, I was tired of spending money over and over again for, uh, for air. So I wanted something that I could just plug in and use. So it's got three different modes and it really helps me clean out my bobbin case and get the loose threads out of there, clean things out. Um, so I will show you a demo of how I use this also. but I just love it. I can plug it in and charge it. It's always good to go. Um, I actually use it to like dust off my heat press and stuff. You guys, some of you know, I live in a very rural area. It gets very dusty. I'll just dust stuff off. So it comes in handy with more than one thing. But if you are like me and don't like spending your money on recurring things that you can make simpler, I would invest in a rechargeable air duster. I will link this one down below. I think it came in a few different colors. I got the pink one. Um, so yeah, so I really, really like it. It's got a light on it too, which I mean, doesn't really do anything for me. It also came with this extra stuff too. It came with like a carrying bag and then it came with these different like tips and stuff too. So this one that has a brush is actually what I'm gonna use to go through and help clean it out just a little bit more. Here's a little bit more of like a fine tip. What you can do is you can just change them out. So you just pull it off and then just put the new tip on. So it's very, very easy to change them out and use something else. The next is these little tweezer fine tip like uh, scissor things. I know that was a very, very descriptive name. I'll, I'll leave the, the name of it right down below here in the video. Um, but I absolutely love these things. I prefer these much better than my Fiskars curved scissors. I feel like I can get a much closer cut when I'm cutting jump threads and jump stitches and stuff. I use these every single day. I absolutely love them. I use them on hats. I use them on, I use them to get the threads on the back. Um, I use them to get my jump stitches. I use them for a lot of different things. 
The next is 65.9 needles. I cannot function without these. I use these on all of my hats. It doesn't matter what kind of hat it is. I use a 65.9. I almost never use a 75.11. Um, even structured flex fits, structured Richardson's, I use 65.9. I like that they don't leave a big hole. I've seen a lot of people say to use 80.12s because you know they're thicker to get through the structured material of a hat. And I've only had needle breaks with anything other than 65 nines. This is exclusively what I use on hats. I absolutely cannot function without 65 nine needles. The next is frames. Now I wasn't sure when I first bought these, how often I was actually going to use them, but I am obsessed with my eight one fast frames. I find them so handy, especially for things like backpacks. You guys saw those dressage saddle pads that I did in a video. Um, they are great for just hard to reach places, places that you don't necessarily need like this, the insane security of a hoop, you know, if you're doing like a sleeve. So I absolutely love these. They come in so many different sizes and I find them very, very useful. I have yet to do like a pocket with it, which I really want to do soon, um, which honestly is kind of why I bought them in the first place. And it's funny, I still haven't done that yet. But you guys saw I did like a sleeve video with this. So I find them extremely, extremely helpful with um, especially backpacks. You guys have seen a few of the backpacks that I've done. These are extremely, extremely useful. This might not necessarily be a must have, but it certainly does make a lot of things insanely easier and will save you time. And next we have our Mighty Hoops, of course. Now again, I don't know that I would go so far as to say Mighty Hoops are a must have or a necessity, but again, they make your life so much easier. And I get it, they're expensive. You know, remember, I got scammed out of them. They're expensive, so when you find a good deal on them, you wanna jump on it, but you gotta be careful. Um, so, Mighty Hoops. I did the back of a Carhartt jacket with the regular hoop that came with my EM1010. So again, I wouldn't say they're an absolute necessity, but I hope from that video you guys can see how much easier my life would have been if I would have had these. So I've been saving up for them and getting them usually one at a time. Um, I was gifted a few of them, which was an absolute blessing because there's no way I would have been able to afford as many as I was gifted. And then if you have the Mighty Hoop stand, the Freestyle stand, things like that, it makes your life so much easier. They come in so many sizes. They come in the 5x5, five five. this is the 8x13. I have an 11x13, I have a 12x15. I actually have two 5x5s. Five I just got the sleeve hoop that I wanna do a video on soon. So having these in your embroidery arsenal is going to give you so much depth on what you can do. You're not going to have to say no. You're not going to have to worry about, oh my gosh, can I handle it? Um, it's just such, such a great asset to have in your embroidery room. So again, I, I don't know that I would go so far as to say it's a must have. However, it is going to make your uh, work day and work load, work stress, everything exponentially better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I will leave links to everything down below. Um, like I said, some of them are affiliate links, some of them are not, like these uh, clippers to all stitch, it's just a regular link. Um, I'm not an affiliate with all stitch or anything like that. So I will leave links to everything below. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what is in your embroidery room that you find super helpful, that you can't function without. I'm always looking for new stuff. So leave me a comment down below and I will see you in my next video.